video is sponsored by our fine friends over at Hackster.io. If you want to see more projects like this, then head over to their website and browse through their thousands of different projects and topics. Howdy, Tinker Nerds. I am trying to make a smart car, and you can follow along with my progress either down here at the project page or over here somewhere I've made a playlist for you. For a smart car to be truly smart, it has to know stuff about your car. And how does it do that, all-knowing Tinkernut? Well, let me explain it to you. In the US, since 1996, vehicles have been required to contain an onboard diagnostics port that allows you to plug something into it and be able to read information about the car. You know, when your check engine light comes on, it's what the mechanic plugs into your car to figure out what's wrong with it. But you can get so much more from it, like your car's VIN number, RPM, speed, temperature, and other cool stuff like that. And if you don't live in the US, you can check this chart to see when your country started to adopt OBD2 standards. So the big question is, how can we connect this to our Pi and tap into this wealth of information? If you search online for OBD2 adapter, you can find several different options. The most common ones are either USB or Bluetooth. If you're worried at all about Bluetooth being insecure, then I would recommend going with a USB adapter. But if you're familiar with the Bluetooth vulnerabilities and know the risks and know how to stay safe, then you're welcome to go with the Bluetooth adapter, which is what I'm going to do. If you're unfamiliar with it, the OBD2 port should be right below your dashboard where the steering wheel is, at least if you drive on the right hand side of the road then the adapter should plug right into the port. Notice that the Bluetooth light comes on even though the car is off. This is because the OBD2 port has an always on 12 volt power supply, which means that the Bluetooth adapter is always gonna be on, even when you leave your car. That's something to think about. All right, the next step is to pair this with the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which already has Bluetooth built in, so I don't need an extra adapter to connect to it. So logging into my Pi's terminal, I can access the Bluetooth controls by typing this command. The first step is to make sure it's on, and then I wanna make sure it's pairable. And for persistent pairing, we want to turn it on as an agent and set it to default. Now we can scan for the MAC address of the OBD2 adapter, which will be represented by saying OBD2 at the end of it. Copy down that MAC address and type pair and then your MAC address to pair with it. If it asks for a pin, the default is normally 1234. Then to connect to it automatically when the Pi reboots, type trust and then your MAC address, and then you can turn the scan off and quit out of the Bluetooth controls. Now the Bluetooth adapter should be connected to the Pi, so let's see what information we can get from it. Since the OBD2 adapter communicates through serial, we first have to bind the adapter to a serial port. Then to communicate, I'm gonna install a program called Screen and then use it to connect to it. Okay, now we can finally start sending commands. The first three commands are kind of standard. ATZ resets the device and returns its ID. ATL1 enables line feeds and ATH1 sets display headers. Okay, so the ATSP command tells us how we want to communicate with the port. There are several different ports to choose from depending on which car you have. If you have no idea, like me, then just go with zero for automatic detection. Finally, we're at the part where we can tell it what data to give us, and we do this with two hex values. The first values represent the mode that we want to use, and you can find a list of available modes on this Wikipedia page where you can get vehicle information, see diagnostic codes, clear diagnostic codes, show frozen data, or show current data. And for this test, that's what we want to use, current data. So that's my first set of hex values. The next set of hex values are parameter IDs or PIDs, of which there are nearly 200 different ones to choose from, all of which again are listed on this Wikipedia page. For now, I just want to return the speed of the car. So for me, that's gonna be 0D for the final set of hex values. So then hitting enter, I should get the speed. And that looks nothing like the speed. What it returns here is another set of hex values. So the first values are header values, which we actually probably should have gotten rid of by typing ATH0 earlier instead of ATH1. Next is 41, which is a response for the mode that we set, and then 0D, which is the speed request that we set, sent over. 
And then the following hex value is the speed. And in general, you'll need to convert this value from hex to decimal. But it's obvious that my car was going zero kilometers an hour since it's idling. But let's say that the hex value was 32, for example. Then we could convert it using an online converter and it gives us the result of 50, which means the car was going 50 kilometers an hour. And for those of you on the Imperial system, you then need to convert that to miles per hour. So it's a similar method for RPMs, engine load, temperature, and different things like that. And that's the basics for how to get data from an OBD2 port on your car. But wouldn't it be nice to make a script that does all that for you and outputs the results in a nice graphical window? Yes, yes it would. And that's what we're gonna take a look at next week. What would you do with the OBD data? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.